Well, welcome to church. How about we stand together? If you're in the room, let's keep our masks on as we sing. If you're online, welcome. How about you join and sing with us? Sing it louder today, amen? Come on. God is with us. We're surrounded by His goodness. Sing it louder if you found grace. As you walk into a new day, in the valley of the victory, no, He's never gonna leave me. Sing it louder through the failures. Aren't you glad? your soul 
together as we sing and declare who our God is today with faith. Let faith arise in this place. Oh, you're a perfect Father. Oh, we surrender to your love now. People come together. Strangers name.
Come on, let's put our hands together for King Jesus today. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Amen. Well, if you'd like to take your seats as we continue to worship our God together today. Love to invite two very special ladies up to the platform, my two daughters. We're going to uh, sing a song for you today uh, as we continue to worship. And the verse this week as I was preparing for worship today was this verse, Zephaniah 3.17, which talks about God being with us and God taking delight in each one of us and God rejoicing over us with songs and with singing. And so today as we sing this song, I just pray that you open your heart for God is singing over you as we sing over you right now. And God is delighting in each one of you, in us today as we gather together. And He is with us. We're going to sing for you.
Thank you so much, Ingalls family, for blessing us. We want to thank our Lord. God, thank you that you love us, that you're our Father, that you accept us, you forgive us, you restore us, you welcome us into your arms. Thank you for the beautiful way we were able to see and hear and experience your love just now. Continue to pour your love out in us, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Isn't it wonderful how God can minister to us through people and their gifts? So beautiful. Well, welcome to church today. Great to be together. I want to say a special welcome to those that might be new, that you've joined us today for the first time on Father's Day. If you're online and today's your first time, if you can hit connect with us and fill in your details so we can know a little bit more about you and connect with you and help you learn a bit more about us. If you are new here in the room, then after the service, we'd invite you to the point, head out the doors, turn left opposite the cafe. We'd love to shout you a coffee and get to know you a little bit more. Well, happy Father's Day. How good's Father's Day? How good's the set here? Come on, I love a bit of, you know, like camping. I I kind of like a little marshmallow right about now, just saying, you know, toast some marshmallows. But I'm a lover of all things we can celebrate. And so Father's Day gives us another reason to celebrate and cheer and enjoy. And we've got our kids in with us today. Kids, so great that you could be with us. And whether you're online or in the room, we're going to have some cheering opportunity because we are going to celebrate in a moment. We're going to see who wins the Father's Day trophy, the Father's Day cup. We have some dads that have been chosen to face some physical challenges and we're going to see who in fact is the greatest dad of Clovey. This is a moment in time, guys. So I'm going to need you to cheer and get excited. We're going to cut live in a moment. It's going to be on the screens behind me and online. You'll be able to see it as well. We're going to cut live to Pastor Anne out in the foyer and hear about what is happening with our dads, Anne. Great to be with you. Welcome to the track where dreams are made of. Well, we've got three very special dads. Let me introduce you. We have Frosty, who's limbering up here. We have Ryan. Give Ryan a cheer. Can I hear a cheer? I want to I want to cheer for Frosty. Frosty gets a cheer. I've been the Father's Day champion. Let me walk you through the course. What you need to do is step on these stepping stones. We have officials here in the waiting, so you make sure you need to step on every single stepping stone. You come to the ping pong station, you need to bounce the ball at least once. Three balls in the cup. Doesn't matter if it's three separate cups, but three balls into the cup. You then come down to the hurdles. Now, Don't get stuck here, boys, because there's different heights of these hurdles. We have some low, some high. You need to jump over them, okay? I know some of you are probably thinking just pushing through, but you can either do an Olympic-style jump or jump with two legs, whatever you like. You will then come to three boxes. These three boxes, you need to get down low on these three boxes and crawl through. You will be welcomed into the Hungry Hippo style of some skateboards. You need to lie on your bellies, legs up, pushing your feet where you have family members waiting excitedly to throw some balls at you. At the end of there, you will enter the auditorium and you will find three scooters. On those scooters, you need to do a sharp right. Head to the banners where we have experiencing God, reaching beyond and creating a connecting communities. You need to pass our banners straight through to the um, finishing line and the winner takes all. All right, boys, have you got the instructions? Heading back. Come on, Ben. Ben, my cameraman, is keeping up with me today. Come on, Ben, over to the boys here. Coming back to the beginning. Are we ready, boys? Are you ready? Here we go. Ready, set, go. Stepping on every single one. Yes. Ping pong, cheer them on. Three balls. Oh, this is stumping some of them. Come on, three balls in. Come on. Two. Oh, we have to wait until you get the three balls.
up on stage, our dads. Let's give these three a round of applause. Yeah. Well done. Come forward. Well you can done. do the honour, oh, Anne. The this is a moment in time. The legend, the man. Woohoo! Well done. Yes. Well done. Well done. You can hold that pride at proud and high. So good. Hey, here. why don't we, um, just to finish celebrating, how about all the dads in the room? Why don't you stand up? Yes. We're going to give you a round of applause and celebrate our dads. Come on. We love you guys. Ryan is the legend of you all. Well done. Well, so good to have some fun in church. And as you take your seats, kids, you can head on out with Pastor Anne and enjoy celebrating today. Well done. As the kids head out, why don't we turn our attention to the screen to learn more about Pong, another exciting activity we have coming up. Forty million. How do you even comprehend that number? 400 MCGs packed out like grand final day? Well, how about the entire population of Australia and then add 15 million? 40 million. This is how many people are in slavery around the world right now. It's hard to fathom such a number, but maybe we can start to comprehend it by zooming in on one. One life, one girl or one boy, but trapped, trafficked, no freedom. What if I told you, you could use your one life to radically change the course of another life forever? Your one life, releasing freedom to another, enabling them to chase their dreams. One life full of joy and hopeful expectation. At the Pong, we've been playing table tennis and fighting slavery for 10 years now, and we're only just getting started. For us, it's all about the one. Come join Pong United this year as we rise up and stand in the gap of injustice between one life and their freedom. One life needs a voice. One life needs hope. One life needs one life. Is that you? You have one life. What are you going to do with it? So we get this opportunity next weekend, so the 10th and the 11th of September, to play table tennis. And clearly Frosty and Ryan and Mike need to work on their um, bouncing ball skills. You've got like 24 hours. You can play table tennis and work on that. But it's this opportunity to make a difference in the life of someone else, to actually see people freed from slavery. And whilst we can ask our friends to give and donate, we actually need more players. We've got 24 hours, as I said, and you basically commit to a three-hour slot. So maybe you, your family, your friends, your life group, our life group's doing a slot on the Saturday for three hours. And I am really appalling at table tennis, but it is a lot of fun. So you don't have to be good to make a difference, but we can actually stand in the gap for someone. So if you're considering what it could look like, rally some people together. You can sign up today. If you're here in person, head to the foyer afterwards to the Pong stand and sign up. You can go to our website and sign up and actually commit to playing and then, then asking people to sponsor you. But it's a great opportunity. We're hoping as a church to be able to raise $15,000 and make a real difference. Together, we can all connect and do that, which is a great opportunity. We also have next weekend coming up our Discovering Clovey course. So next Sunday, the 12th of September. For those that want to know a little bit more about us here at Clovey, Anne referred to our values as who we are over there, experiencing God, creating community and reaching beyond. But Discovering Clovey is a space where you can learn a little bit more, but maybe you're considering membership. And this is the next step to do that. So if you want to know more, uh, next week, 9am, Insight and online at 12.30. You can head to our website or sign up at the info desk if you want to know more about that. Well, as we said, today is Father's Day and it is a lot of fun and laughter and we love it as a church. We can laugh together and have some fun. We also recognise Father's Day can be a tricky day. It can be a tricky time for some and, and uh, we want to be able to be people who say we recognise that and we, we stand together and as family we love one another. So we want to take some time now to pray for those that are finding today a tricky day and then also to be able to pray for our men, dads or not dads, for all our men that actually who you are matters to us. So why don't we take some time just to pray into that. 
Lord God, we want to come before you today. As we are, we know that you meet us as we are. You love us as we are. And I recognise today for some, Father's Day is a tricky day. Maybe you find yourself in a place where you're grieving today. Maybe you've lost a loved one, lost your father. Maybe there's an absent father. And today is a, a place of pain and hurt. Or maybe today there's a child that you're missing, that you are a father and you're wishing and longing for a reconnection and relationship. Or maybe you, you long to be a dad and you're not yet. It could be a whole gamut of reasons that today can be a tricky day. So Lord, we come before you recognising you're a loving, good, faithful Father. You are the perfect Father where our earthly fathers may have failed us. You are the perfect Father. So for those that are feeling pain and grief today, Lord, I ask that you would heal them. I ask that you would comfort them. I ask that you would be present in their situation. That you would walk with each one. That you would bring hope where maybe it feels hopeless. Holy Spirit, that you would move in power, you would bring change and you would restore families, you would heal families. Lord, I thank you that you are always with us. No matter what is going on, no matter whether we can see it or not, you are faithful and you are good. So I pray for those grieving today that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that you are with them and you are for them. Lord, we want to pray for the men in our community, both here in the room and online. And so I just want to ask if you're a man today, if you can stand wherever you are, young and old, all our men can stand in this place, even at home, online, if you can stand. And if you're near one of the guys, maybe you want to reach out a hand, lay a hand on them. Because we want to pray for all our men today, young and old, whoever you are. Lord God, we thank you for our men, those online and those in the room. We thank you that you love them. We thank you that they are your sons. Lord, we thank you that they can know your love in their life. Lord, I pray for each one right now, that they would know your goodness and your faithfulness, that you're a father who is for them and loves them and has so much more. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fall afresh on the men here today. They would have a, a real anointing of your presence. Lord, in their workplaces, in their families, in their neighbourhoods, that you would lead and guide them. You would anoint them with wisdom, wisdom to be good men who love you. Help them make decisions, help them make choices. Oh God, I pray that you would bless them with joy in their day, joy of knowing you day in, day out. Lord, in their role as, as dads, as, as sons, as brothers, as uncles, as grandpas, as neighbours, may they be able to walk alongside others and be your hands and feet. May they be able to bring your joy, to bring your kingdom to earth. Holy Spirit, use them in powerful ways as such wonderful men to bring change in society, to bring blessing to others. God, I thank you for them and I thank you that you want to equip them for all that you have for them. Use them to bear fruit in your kingdom. Provide for each one of them in every way that they need, Lord God. Move in power in the lives of our men today. We thank you for them, God, and we speak such blessing over their lives today. We thank you for each one. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Amen.
Father's Day and thanks for joining us uh, on this really special day from wherever you're participating in this service. And as part of our opportunity and time today, we get to honour dads, we get to honour men and we get to have a conversation today that explores faith, family and even manhood. So we've gathered two lads from our community to kind of share some stories, some insights that they've learnt along the way in this journey known as life. And like any good experience for lads, a campfire is a great place to have great conversation. I don't know about you, but you sit around a campfire, you have pretty open conversation about stories and about life. And as we metaphorically all kind of sit around the campfire together, like it's a big group fire that's not really that big for a big group that's here. But as we metaphorically sit around the campfire today, the invitation is to to lean in to open your heart and mind to what God might want to speak uh, to you today. So we've gathered two guys. We've gathered Martin Wilson and Lindsay Saul. Would you put your hands together for them this morning? (laughs) Thanks for coming, lads. Really excited about having you uh, in this conversation. Now, we've talked about camping, campfires. I think we should talk about camping destinations quickly. What's your go-to camping destination? Lindsay, what would be for you? There's been a couple of camping trips to the outback with mates. They were always interesting. And I can't say the conversations around the campfire was very profound, but uh, <laughs> always interesting. And, uh, you know, taking the kids sometimes to around Kaipo Forest we used to enjoy. You know, just a, it's a close by and it's a nice spot. So it was a good, uh, good to get the kids out camping. Mm. So good. So good. What about for you, Marty? Um, we recently went up to Northern Territory, which was awesome. But uh, our regular go-to is sort of uh, Lake Bonnie. Armory out at the Riverland. That's uh, that's a pretty good spot. Come on, so good, so good. I'm a, I'm a bit of a sucker for a place called Wilson's Prom uh, in Victoria. Great hiking location and uh, some really white like sand beaches. You know, you hike through the bush all day and you just like there's the reward of like crystal blue water uh, along the way. We'd love to get to know you a little bit more. So uh, before we jump into your stories, um, Marty, tell us a little bit about what do you do with yourself during the week. Yeah, well, um, so I'm Marty. Marty, I'm married to Susie. You probably see her up uh, leading worship every now and again. Um, we've got three boys: uh, Henry, he's three; Rogers, five; and Maxwell's seven. Um, I I manage the food and beverage for the Oval Hotel, um, and then on major event days, I manage the Eastern Sand. So that keeps me uh, pretty busy in hospitality. Uh, that's been me through and through. Um, yeah, that's that's me. So good. What about for you, Lindsay? Yeah, I'm uh, married to my wife, Leslie, for, uh, I better remember this correctly, hadn't I? (laughs) Some years now, let's just say. (laughs) It's dangerous ground. uh, Yeah, it's dangerous ground, and uh, I'm retired, so I have a bit of flexibility, so it's very hard for me to tell you what I, you know, do from day to day or week to week, but all I can tell you is I manage to keep myself very busy somehow. Um, I've I've got a, uh, you know, relatively large family, there's three kids in there, partners and they're well established in life and I've got six grandchildren and uh, a good extended family you know and they keep me busy at times and I must admit you know since retirement I enjoy volunteering because it keeps you in contact with people and uh, and uh, it just enables you to contribute in in some small way so so good so good so Marty tell us a little bit about your faith story how did you come to faith yeah absolutely um so God's always been around. Um, when I was young, I went to church, uh, did a youth group, church basketball, um, went to church on a Sunday night, uh, until sort of the age of about, you know, 18, where I, I fell into the hospitality industry, which I do love. Um, but as an 18-year-old male, um, there's a lot of things that sort of start to happen and, um, you know, um, really led me away from the church, I suppose, you know, um, falling into, uh, yeah, alcohol, drugs, um, uh, relationships, you know, really started to be a form part of my life, uh, sport fell away. Um, and basically from the age of 18 through to about 32, um, faith, church wasn't, wasn't even on the, on the side, it just wasn't there at all. Um, and I definitely uh, lived a lifestyle which was pretty transient, you know, a lot of travelling, um, and, you know, it's just what I thought made me happy. Um, until sort of um, I, um, you know, a, a good four years ago, um, it came to a, a point where I needed to be uh, honest with my family, 
uh, with my wife, uh, with her family and, and just sort of come clean about the lifestyle that I was living. Um, I'd been living a, a double life, um, you know, in terms of uh, I'd come to church, uh, but Monday to Friday I'd, I'd be a different kind of man. Um, so I guess, you know, for me, um, really being honest um, with myself and my family and my friends led to uh, one night where um, after a lot of prayer, um, Susan and I decided to sort of sit down and, and, and pray together. Um, and for the first time um, in a long time, I sort of, I wasn't praying for specific outcomes. Um, I was, I'd, I'd been past that. <laughs> I was pr- praying specifically for something for so long. Um, and it got to a point where I thought, no, you know what, this, this isn't working. Um, I just need to pray that whatever will be, will be. I trust you. Um, and whatever the outcome is, I don't mind. Um, as long as I, I get to know you and that I have a relationship with you, uh, Lord. And on the same night, Sue's prayed specifically for me about what I've been praying for uh, for such a long time. And um, the next morning I woke up and my first thing before my sort of head lift, left the pillow, I could feel a difference. Um, and I knew instantly that something had changed. I didn't know what it was uh, until uh, a good couple of days later. But uh, overnight I was, I was healed uh, of, of all my wrongdoings. So. Well, thanks so much, Marty. What about you, Lindsay? Tell us a little bit about how you came to faith. Yeah, I, I um, came to faith much later in my life. You know, as I always say, that I had a conscious awareness of something greater than, than themselves, but I can't say that I ever really acknowledged it or stepped out in faith. That's what I say. You know, I never made a commitment or went to church, for example, but you know, it was always something that interested me. You come across... Um, some very respected people who are very much into faith and there's good conversation so there's always an interest there but it really wasn't until I retired that um, I made a commitment and uh, decided to make sense of my beliefs and I went into what I call is my private study period which involved a lot of reading and uh, talking to people I knew now I don't want you to feel too sorry for me all this private study because really it wasn't obsessive but it was consistent and uh, I got to the stage where I realised that the reading was useful, it's all good background, but in the end you can't find faith in books. And that's when I was led to Alpha here at Clovercrest uh, through an extended family member who attends the church here, gave me the invitation. I came along and I did Alpha, from Alpha I've into the church here at Clovercrest where I've continued my faith journey, you know, until the present day and beyond for a few more years, I hope. So good. So, Lindsay, looking at maybe a key moment, what's been something that has shaped you? Well, yeah, um, there is, I think, in all their lives, there's a sort of a, a pivotal moment, which sort of, or waypoints, if you like, that guide us along the way. For me, I, I came to the church, and I must admit, um, you know, I came to the church struggling. Uh, I came to the church asking a lot of questions. Uh, I wanted answers, but I couldn't get the answers which satisfied me, and... Uh, I got involved, you know, I tried hard, and, uh, but I never seemed to get it and there was always seemed to be something missing. Until one day here at church, a friend of mine asked the question. She said, Lindsay, she said, is your faith in your head or your heart? And, uh, I, you know, I protested at the time very vehemently. You know, of course it's in my heart, you know, what else would you think? But it's a question that I thought about for some time after and I started to get to the realisation that I'd been putting the cart before the horse and that the heart of the Christian faith is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and it's within the context of that relationship I realised that you grow and develop in your faith. And that, that was, a, uh, was a moment for me when I made a surrender to that relationship. It was, a, it was that light bulb moment that sort of made the big difference in my life and um, I, I went from understanding the truths of the Christian faith in an academic sense to actually living those truths and then including them in my everyday life. It, it led to my uh, baptism here at the church. Uh, it made the Bible, for example, much easier to read and more meaningful. 
and uh, it brought the church alive here and much more relevant as a place for worship, uh, a place for uh, fellowship, a place for learning and a place for serving others. And to be quite honest with you, as I look back now, it's a decision or a realisation I wish I'd come, come to much earlier in my life. What about for you, Marnie? A key moment that's shaped you? Yeah, yeah. Um, as a dad, I have, I have a lot of fails, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, I think we're all still learning. Um, no, definitely. Um, we, um, we'd been searching for a house for a long time um, to buy and, 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 and renting and things like that and um, finally came across our dream house and um, we were going to auction uh, this one day and um, I was given three very clear signs um, from God that uh, I, I needed to come clean to, to Susie about what I've been doing. Um, and one of them was in a, um, a verse, a Bible verse, which was um, in, in Hebrews, which I'll talk more a bit about later. Um, another was a, a random uh, message from my brother-in-law to, to Susan, which is um, uh, basically two chameleons, uh, one saying to the other, Susie, I can change my stripes. It was a complete random text message. Um, and another one was also um, a, a story that my sister shared uh, with me as well. Um, I had to, uh, I was sitting down on the couch with Suze, we were sort of looking at our finances, we just bought this house, <laughs> how's it going to work? And then my body just went on fire. My, you know, I had this big lump in my throat and I had burning um, in my chest. I'd been praying for months um, uh, that I, I wanted to, God to reveal a way to me how I could um, change my life and how I could come clean. Um, and I didn't think it was going to be like that. Um, but basically I had to uh, get down in front of Susie and tell her what was going on. Um, and and by, by God's grace, uh, that same night, Susie decided um, that she was going to forgive me and journey with me. Um, and from there, um, that led sort of the next six to 12 months of you know, a bit of pain, um, a lot of pain, um, but a lot of healing as well, which um, which was absolutely uh, amazing. And, and part of that was a lot of prayer um, and a lot of honesty, um, a lot of me sharing with a group of guys, um, but also sharing with my family and, and Susie's family um, because I wanted support for her uh, as well because... Um, you know, she's, she's the love of my life and I wanted her to, to be supported. So looking at that, that moment, really the building around, you know, buying a house, where do you kind of see God at work? Yeah, it was basically, um, so with, with, with the verse, it's Hebrews um, 11, 15, 16. And at the time, sort of my, my father-in-law was, was trying to, it, was, it came up as the verse of the day. And um, the first part of it was in context because it was basically about um, people leaving a city, starting afresh. Um, you know, it's a chance to move on and, and, and not so much a clean slate, but, you know, to start afresh because um, we've been looking for a house for so long. Um, what we didn't realise was, um, you know, a week afterwards, that's sort of a good couple of verses afterwards, um, was really... Um, really true to the lifestyle I was living in, you know, living a, a worldly life and um, and indulging in, in, in what I shouldn't have been. Um, so for that specific verse uh, to come from um, from Susie's dad to be passed on to me on that day, that, that was a big, that was a big wake up call. Um, but what's more interesting is, you know, you, you always know that God's there because, you um, we didn't know that that whole verse was was relevant, but it, it certainly was. What about for you, Lindsay? Looking at kind of your your, your faith story, like you spending time in your private study searching for answers, where were some of the key moments where you saw God at work for you? Yeah, it's interesting. I was just listening to Marty. And it's a reminder, isn't it, as you look back through uh, your faith journey, just how those important emotional steps are. You know, I can remember in my own step that, you know, when I made the surrender that there's a there's a feeling of peace or relief almost that you've got to that point and an overwhelming feeling of warmth and love that you really can't describe at different times through your life I think in my sense that God God was uh, always there uh, I just you know it was full not you know it was 
uh, not um, you know, intelligent enough, if that's the word, to actually acknowledge it. And um, certainly when I came to my private study period, as I call it, is uh, it was almost like a journey I was being led on when I look back. And every uh, there were a series of coincidences which just seemed to lead me logically to one step to the next. And uh, certainly since, you know, I've made, you know, that pivotal moment for me uh, it was a moment when I started to learn to get out of the driver's seat, so to speak, to actually trust in God and, and um, uh, be real in my faith. And um, uh, I think uh, continually with God's help and God's guidance, then I'm getting better at that as I go along on my journey. And any key scriptures for you throughout your journey that really were significant in key moments? Yeah, I, um, I you know, every, you know, the Bible, yeah, once, once you, you know, it, it means something. And every time you read it, there seems to be some verse or something which is inspirational and means something to you. One that's always meant to me is Matthew um, uh, chapter 7, uh, verses 7 and 8. And it refers to uh, an invitation, it seems to me, from Jesus during the Sermon on the Mount when he says in verse 7 that ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And it, to me it's a sort of a reminder how simple and easy it is at times just to knock on the door and uh, ask for forgiveness and just invite God's grace into our lives. And to me they're powerful words which have the ability to change lives for the better and uh, you know, no matter what our pers personal circumstances are. Because sometimes, you know, I've, I've been involved with Alpha in my own life, sometimes we make things a little bit too complicated. And uh, certainly that's, that was the truth for me as I led up in that faith. And I'm sure with God's help that I've, you know, I'm just, just so blessed as I travel through the journey. So Marty, as we uh, wrap up our conversation uh, today, what would you love to encourage people in? Yeah, um, prayer. Uh, prayer is so powerful. Um, yeah, to tap into what Lindsay was saying, um, to be able to share um, or to be honest with, with God, firstly, um, to have the courage to um, share with mates um, and then to your, the, your closest ones, um, to spread the net a little bit, I guess. Um, and also that prayer, you know, prayer not might come in the answer that you're looking for. You might Pray, pray specifically for something but God's always got a plan and it might not be the exact answer that you're, you're looking for um, and it might not happen this week, next week or in the next six months it will happen um, and you just got to remember that God's trying to teach you a lesson during that time or He can fix things overnight uh, but sometimes it might take a little bit longer as well so I just really encourage people to pray pray together pray with your mates and share your story you don't have to tell the whole world um, but just start telling people because it will lift such a huge burden off of your shoulders um, and God loves us and he forgives us what about for you Lindsay? yeah well I've got to be careful here because I just don't want people to, for a minute to think that I'm a perfect Christian so but when I'm giving advice but uh, look, what I've come to understand is that it, look, it's okay to ask questions about Christianity and it's okay to have doubts about religion generally. You know. And I think really it's incumbent on us all really to ask the questions and to challenge issues you know, when you feel it's necessary. But one thing we should never doubt is God's presence and his love for us in every second of our life. And in that sense, I can quite honestly say I just feel very blessed. Yeah, I love what you're saying there around feeling empowered to ask questions. Um, Cara Powell from Fuller Youth Institute talks about that doubt is not toxic to faith, silence is. And so the aspect of actually, it's good to ask questions and doubt's not actually like a bad thing because sometimes doubt can actually lead us to a path of greater revelation or greater insight of who God is. Um, so, so good. Would you put your hands together and thank uh, Marty and Lindsay this morning? You know, I wonder as we uh, wrap up our time together, if we could just close our eyes. I wonder um, what has been a thought? What has been an idea? What has been uh, a scripture that has caught your attention? 
I want you to ask yourself, why has that caught your attention today? That thought, that idea, that scripture, maybe even a story. Maybe if you've heard stories around coming to faith, a change in lifestyle, maybe there's things, if you're honest with yourself, you might resonate or put yourself in a similar story too. We serve a God of grace. We serve a God of forgiveness. We serve a God of new beginnings. We serve a God that regardless of our age and stage, anyone can come to faith. It's never too late. I wonder, what is it for you today? I want to pray for some people today. One of the the groups that I want to pray for is, maybe you heard Lindsay talk about, is faith in your head or in your heart? Like is faith just knowledge and no action? You know, Matthew 22, 37 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Let it be more than just knowledge, but actually something that shifts the way that you live, shifts what you do. And if you just really resonate with that, just where you are real quick, I'd love you just to raise your hand where you are and say, yeah, that's Dubsy, that's me. I'd love just to pray with you, just real quick. Thank you so much. That you would recognize that maybe your your faith is just, it's just in your head. It's just knowledge, but nothing more than that. You're going, actually, I want my faith to actually encompass all of me, mind, body, heart. I want the works. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Real quick, just raise your hand. We're not going to pull you out of the front or anything like that. Just to know who we're praying for. God, we thank you for every single person that has raised uh, their hand in this moment. Father, I thank you that you want a deeper connection with us than just something that is just knowledge. And God, I pray, Lord, today as we step closer to you, I pray, Lord, that our heart would fall more in love with you than ever before. May you get all of our attention. May you get all of our affection, God. Realign our heart to your heart in this moment, God. The second group I want to pray for is maybe there's a prayer of your heart. There's a cry, there's a longing, just like Marty did. There's a cry inside. Maybe there's a prayer that you've been crying out to God for a period of time. You've been asking for His guidance, His help. And I just pray that you would experience answer prayer. That you would see God at work. I love what Marty was sharing around. It's not just something that might happen straight away, but sometimes it takes a bit of time. And God, for those that are joining us today that have got a cry of their heart, Lord, thank you that you hear us. We get the imagery in the book of Psalms when it talks about that when we cry out, when we pray to you, you bend down and you listen. And a sense just to tell you that God hears your cry. God hears your prayers. Your prayers aren't just going into open space. He hears them. And the invitation is to keep crying out, to keep praying, to keep petitioning the Lord. Give us perseverance. Give us fresh hope when it feels like we don't have any, God. And thank you, God, that you can make all things new. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we've loved having you here on this Father's Day. And uh, if there's anything that's come up for you, if you want to talk, if you want to pray, some of our team uh, will be down the front here. But we want you to have a great day. 
text your dad, high five your dad, just high five everyone on the way out at a distance, okay? Because we've got to be COVID safe. So like Bluetooth, you know, distance, all right? Got to be seen to be doing the right thing. All right. Have a great Sunday, everyone. And we can't wait to see you next week.